All right, Patty Wagstaff, three times national champion, an absolute legend of aerobatics. Thanks for joining us on Air Sports News. Thanks, Regan. Thanks for having me. So tell me what's going on right now down in Florida. You've got your training school there. Yeah, we do. Right now it's pouring rain. It's coming down in torrents, but I, I think it'll get better. It's just scattered stuff. So typical summer. Um, we do actually. We're, we have one student here today who's doing uh, pit spin training in his own pits with one of our instructors and um, we stay busy. Um, all the air shows are canceled for the year so far and just waiting to see what's going to happen. And uh, yeah, and I'm working on a lot of projects that I have going on. So. Yeah, the air shows, everybody we're speaking to is in the same boat. Your air show is absolutely phenomenal. Everybody talks about it, it's five star ratings. Thank Any you. idea when you're going to be back? No, I think my next show is supposed to be in September. I haven't heard the official word yet, whether they're going to be in Kansas City. Uh, it's a great air show. I just don't know, you know. And I think even the shows that want to continue, I think they're probably going to have a hard time with the municipalities and the cities and things are starting to heat up again. And uh, we're all sort of, you know, just waiting to see. Yeah, indeed. A couple of weeks ago, we, uh, we reported on your video training. Tell me a bit about that. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, I sent that along to Sporties. They were really excited. So that's one of the projects I've been working on. Actually, um, having to stay home. We, we closed our flight school for about a month in uh, March, April time period, of course, and, um, and then started up again. But um, it gave me a chance to stay home every day and work on video scripts. So uh, we've done one... Um, video, which is Introduction to Aerobatics with Sporties. Um, they're fantastic to work with. They have a beautiful graphics department yeah. and a lot of real, you know, um, aviation nuts there that just love working on this stuff. And the Introduction to Aerobatics, it's an hour, maybe 15 long, all about everything to do with aerobatics, the history of aerobatics, where you can see it, what the different types of aerobatics are, you know, air show flying or competition flying. Um, stunt flying, military flying, that kind of thing, formation, um, um, how to get involved in it, what some of the maneuvers are, and a little bit about how to do them. Um, and our next video that we're producing now is um, going to be loops, rolls, and spins, and how to fly them. So it goes into depth on um, all those maneuvers and how to do them um, for both airplanes with inverted systems and airplanes without inverted systems, like for an RV, let's say. It doesn't have an inverted system or, or whatever t6 you know something like that so so we're trying to give people as much information as possible on how to stay safe what happens if you get in trouble uh what's the correct way to do the maneuvers and uh, it's been a lot of fun so um the, the third video will be a little more um it's slightly more advanced putting those maneuvers together in say cuban eights and Immelmans and reverse cubans, things like that, and then how to build those into a sequence. And then when we have those first three videos done, um, probably by maybe November, I'm guessing, um, we should, um, you'll be able to buy all three, you know, bundle them and buy all three together. And then I have ideas for lots more videos down the road, upset training, maybe formation, flying, and... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in the upset training. That's um, been very well received. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, the um, upset training is very popular these days, and I think that's going to be our fourth video. Um, the, um, you know, there's there's a lot of people that realize that they do need more training than they get when they get their private commercial instrument. Even uh, it's only CFI uh, flight instructors these days that have to have any kind of spin endorsement, spin training, and often that's just a very short, you know, introduction to it. So I don't know that they, uh, some of them really never get comfortable. Um, upset trainings become popular for people who don't necessarily want to pursue aerobatics or don't think that they'd like it, but they do want to stay out of trouble. So, you know, whereas an aer aerobatic flying, you know, you can spend your whole career becoming, you know, proficient, getting better and better, and, you know, kind of like I've done, you know, making it my life. Or, or you can do a two day course or even a one day course, um, which we offer as well. And, and just give people some really good basic skills that will keep them out of trouble. And sometimes people come and take an upset training course and um, a lot of them are corporate pilots. Um, some of them are private pilots, but a lot of um, even military pilots, ag pilots. Um, and then they go, this is fun. And then they come back for more. So, uh, but it's, it's short and effective and it's, um, it's a good way to, to, you know, stay safe. 
survive. <laughs> when you first started flying, when you first got your license, you were very quickly into aerobatics. Who was there for you to coach you? Did you work it all out for yourself? Right, I went to Alaska and there was, there was, at first there wasn't anybody there and I, I couldn't wait to do a spin and a roll because I thought, what if, you know, what if I get in a spin? I kept hearing about this, this stuff, but there was nobody that would do it. And um, I thought, I don't want to spend, you know, however long I stay in aviation, I don't want to spend my time flying without knowing what can happen and knowing how to recover from it. And I can't imagine having a career in aviation without having that, having some kind of background. Um, like they used to teach in World War II. You know, everybody had to do aerobatics to begin with. Um, so uh, finally, there was, a, there was a woman named Darlene Dubé who started teaching up there, and I took a 10-hour course from her and, um, and went from there, bought a little you know, a decathlon and, and kept taking lessons every chance I could. Um, sometimes I'd just go to the States and I'd fly with somebody like Dwayne Cole, whoever I could find that was the best person. I would, I would call them, I would go see them, I would make an point in going to see them. And, and uh, you know, I still do that. I still get coached and still ask for advice from, from people, you know, on how I'm doing. So it's kind of an ongoing thing, not just in aerobatics, but in aviation in general. Yeah, I think a lot of people who start in aviation, whether it be any of the sports, one of the early lessons to learn is that you're always a student all the way through your career you're always a student yeah and that's a great way to look at it always a beginner you know we have that little sticker uh suzuki roshi suzuki the zen teacher master about beginner's mind you know if you're uh, have a beginner's mind about everything that you do we encourage people here uh, especially to come come with no expectations don't read anything uh, don't study anything, just come, then then read later. You know, just be open-minded. Yeah, too many people arrive having watched all the YouTube videos and get themselves all in knots with the yeah, It's true, it's so true. There's so much out there. That's another reason we want to do these uh, sporties videos is, you know, to take a lot, you know, all the, the one-offs and yes. try, and, try and put them in one place, so. So when you started with aerobatics, you were extremely focused and goal orientated. You knew what you wanted to do right from the get go. No, not really. I, I just knew that I wanted to fly and that I love to fly aerobatics and, and I knew that that would make me a really good pilot. Um, but I didn't know what my goals were going to be and, and I, my goals kept changing. You know, at first it was just to learn. And then I, I said to my husband, um, I said, now what? I said, now, now I've got to put my money where my mouth is, right? I, you know, we have this aerobatic airplane, we have a super decathlon. Now I'm kind of nervous. What if I don't like it and I don't want to do this? And he said, well, he gave me the best advice I've ever had gotten. He said, he said, don't worry about it. Just do one air show and do one contest. And if you don't like it, you don't have to do it again. At least you've tried. And that was great advice, you know, um, and obviously I kept going, but my, my goals kept changing. I um, wanted to fly a contest, so I did, and then I tried another one, and then I uh, decided to try and get on the U.S. aerobatic team. And, and after a couple of years, I realized that um, uh, the guys all said a woman couldn't win the nationals. And um, that a woman couldn't win the nationals. Yeah. That's what they were saying. Cause I said, well, wh why hasn't a woman ever won? And there had been some really, really good women pilots and top, top rated, but never, number one. And uh, they, Oh, well, no, women aren't as aggressive <laughs> or, you know, they're just, you know, whatever. the judges would never let it happen. I get these responses. So then my goals changed to wanting to win. It took seven years, but, um, and a big part of that was educating people that, you know, you could be, you could have fun and be serious and achieve your goals at the same time. You know, you didn't have to come in there and, yeah be tough and you know you just had to be focused and, and show that you could do it so so my goals kept changing they're still changing I don't know what my goals are now <laughs> now I do but you know but <laughs> goals change all the time yeah, of course. whether it's in flying or whatever and I think you have to understand that and also they take detours they don't always work out and, yeah you know, timing and uh, you know so many variables in life so so we have to be flexible and then, but you also, in my opinion, have to be ready to grab onto the opportunities when they, they might only present themselves once and then they're gone, they sort of slip away, so. Who do you see, who have you got your eyes on now? Who excites you in aerobatics? Which pilots are really 
bubbling under the surface, shall I say. You know, everybody knows some of the really top pilots. Bill Stein, I love watching Bill. Um, he's very creative to watch. Um, every show is slightly different, kind of like mine is. I, I mix it up a little. You know, we still have the same basic format, but, but if I had to do the exact same thing every time, I'd, I'd get really bored. Um, so I love watching Bill Stein. He's, he's really a um, very special pilot, I think. Um, Rob Holland is always amazing to watch because he's very creative. His show is really different than mine. Um, he does some very technical things that are amazing, and he brings them up a little higher, and you can see them. And and I'm kind of barnstormer, you know. I want to be down in the down in the weeds, smoke and noise, and um, and that's the fun part about air shows is everybody's different. Even you can ten people fly the same exact model of airplane, and and their personalities are going to come out. And, uh, you know, I can walk into an air show and see who's in the air without knowing, you know, without telling exactly whose plane it is. And I know immediately who's flying because of that flair that they have, so. It's un unreal to think this summer we have no air shows worldwide. It's just a very strange sensation. It's very strange. It's kind of interesting to see how people are getting creative and doing other things. You know, there've been these online air shows and uh, I know my friend Mark Jeffries in, in the UK is doing a lot of sky writing and, uh, he sent me a picture this morning of, uh, and he's another amazing, amazing air show pilot, but he, um, he sent me a picture today that he's, he's going to do, uh, I think he's going to draw a heart in the sky for somebody's 40th anniversary and do some sky riding and he has all this pyro hanging off his wings. It's really, uh, so he's doing that. And, um, I talked to Rob Holland the other day, I said, what, what are you doing? He said, well, I haven't been flying for a couple of months, which is totally unreal for him but he's been playing his guitar a lot right. and so you know in some senses i think it's really good to um to see where your creativity takes you well because without this none of us in aviation would have had a break it's the same every year the same schedule the tight schedule we don't get that two or three months to... super hectic yeah yeah and and it gets you get burned out it gets it gets old it's tight you know it's exhausting um, so I think there'd be some good that comes of it. I mean, it's, it's not easy to lose the income, but, you no. know. <laughs> well, you, you've got a couple of great um, achievements that stand out. One, having your aircraft in the Smithsonian is Yeah, that's amazing to me. It's surreal, really. How did that come about? Tell me about that. Um, I had met one of the, met the curator for General Aviation. Her name is Dorothy Cochran. Uh, we've been we've become good friends since and um, Dwayne Cole introduced me to her a long time ago he gave a talk at Air and Space Museum and of course he's passed away in a, you know a few years ago because he was he was quite elderly at that time but um, he had a long career in aviation and um, Dorothy wrote me a letter um, after I won the nationals um, I believe the second time in that airplane maybe the first second time and said uh, um, hey, if you ever think about changing planes, we'd like to have your plane in our collection. I was like, wow, really? So, and at the same time, it was good timing because I was there was a new extra coming out, the 300S. And, uh, the 260 that's in the museum is a prototype, and it wasn't really built very, you know, built as strong as the later planes. So, it all came together, um, and so that's how it happened. So, we had a big bash. I invited about. Uh, my sponsor is BF Goodrich Aerospace at the time, and um, they gave me a big budget for a party. He said, I want a big party when this thing goes in, and everybody's there. And so I think we had 300 people, and uh, I still can't remember everybody that's, that was there. It was such a big... <laughs> and uh, people tell me now, said, you know, I was, at the, I was at the opening or the party, you know, when the plane went in. And you were? I didn't even see you. It was like a big wedding or something. And, one of my friends, um, everybody was drinking champagne, and one of my good friends at the time, he's no longer with us, unfortunately. I can tell you his name, though, Kirk Fulton. He was a really fun guy from Lubbock, Texas. He um, he tripped a little bit. I don't think he'd been drinking that much, but he tripped on a, a stanchion and almost fell into Amelia Earhart's plane. <laughs> to the, her, the red, you know, whatever it was and um <laughs> and Dorothy to this day we still laugh about it I'll never forget when Kirk almost <laughs> fell into Amelia's plane it was a good party <laughs> so that's its location right next to there is it uh, upright it, it was on the floor right behind Amelia and under um uh Lindbergh's um the, the float plane I can't I can't pronounce it 
um, but then it moved out into the hallway when they redid that gallery, the Pioneers of Flight Gallery. And I loved the way it was hanging upside down and it was supposed to be doing a ribbon cut. And so it was sort of in a little bit of a bang and it was correcting for a crosswind. It was a spectacular place because you could look up into it and everybody sent me pictures standing underneath it doing selfies. But now they're redoing that whole gallery and uh, there's going to be a new gallery and I'm not sure where the plane's going to go. It's going to go back in the mall. Um, but I don't know where, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see. A great legacy. And tell me about being inducted into the uh, Hall of Fame. How did that feel when you got that? Uh, oh, that's another, that was another surreal, um, surreal thing too. I, you know, you pinch yourself, uh, of course, you know, I feel like, Hey, I'm just a little hippie, you know, from Alaska, California and Alaska. And, and uh, but I, you know, I don't know. I always figured I'd do something in aviation. I, I didn't know what. Um, it was a really cool evening when I was inducted in the National Aviation Hall of Fame because I was. it was in Dayton, where the, their headquarters are. But it was also during the Dayton Air Show. So I had tons of friends there and all these air show pilots. And, um, and then some family that came in and, and, you know, we had about four or five tables of friends. And... Um, Normally there wouldn't be so many air show people there, but it just happened to be during the air show. And I, uh, I started my remarks by saying, so, uh, you know, introducing all these air show people and saying, these are ambassadors of aviation. These are your ambassadors. These are the people that get out there and bring aviation to the public. So I made them all stand up and get a big, you know, applause. And, and so it was really cool to be able to do that, you know, and it's, it's always easier to take the attention off yourself because you know you're a nervous wreck when you have to speak. At least I am in public. And um, Bill Anders, the astronaut, uh, was also inducted at the same time, so we we had a, a lot of fun talking about it beforehand and seeing him there, and it was it was pretty cool. Fantastic. <laughs> and just thinking about those emotions, which which competition championship springs to mind as being the closest to your heart? At the moment? Um, the first time I won the U.S. Nationals, um, I had a lot of support by then, and um, a couple of the guys that had won it already came up and were the first people to congratulate me. Um, so that really meant a lot, and people were happy because they knew that's what I wanted and that's what I was aiming for. And you know, what was cool is after that, several women have won since then. A couple of years later, a woman named Diane Hockela won. And, um, there's been Vicki Cruz, there have been several um, women. And um, after Diane won, she was the second woman to win. Um, people said, well, how do you feel? Are you jealous? And I said, no, just the opposite. I, that was why I wanted to win, because I don't want it to be a big deal. You know, of course a woman can win. It's silly. You know, the airplane doesn't know the difference. So, um, so it's been really great to see that. Great. And what have you got coming up in the next week? Oh, next week we have st some students coming in. I'm working on, um, I'm talk I talk to sporties almost every day. Um, we're looking at the, um, for the next video with loops, rolls, and spins, I took, we have a little RV6, and I took that up and I did non-inverted system aerobatics in it. And the video came out really well, so it's really fun to do that, plus the other inverted system, you know, uh, in the Super Decathlon and the Extra. So we've been really having fun looking at the RV footage and um, what else I'm going to be flying fly I fly with a friend that I coach and fly with a couple of students and, and I've been cooking a lot <laughs> eating a lot <laughs> <laughs> well listen I we'll wish you a great week Patty. I want to say thank you so much thank for you. Thank you. I feel like I've just talked your ear off and I appreciate you having me been a pleasure thanks very much thank you